Hey everyone, this is Ole Sharanki from Laddering Your Success, and you're listening to the LYS Podcast. All right, all right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. Welcome one, welcome all to another episode of Edge of Steps, powered by Laddering Your Success. As always, I'm your good friend, Ole Sharanki, here with my good friend, Festus, Festus Amoye. How you doing today, brother? Bro, you forgot. We the best. Who? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, we the best. The best education podcast, period, hands down in the world. You're looking at the number one education podcast. Number one, because we did the most episodes, probably did the most episodes. Number two, because we are really dropping that hot fire on topics that really matter to us and our community. Who's our community? Those first generation graduates. You know, you you the first one to graduate high school. Congratulations. Welcome. Are you the first one to graduate? To, to go to college. Welcome. You're the first one to to just trying to get out your neighborhood, trying to do something different. We got you. Welcome. You know, we're talking about kind of filling that gap between, you know, the, the boardroom and the streets or, 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 or what I like to call, you know, the, those who, who are uh, the, the streets and the suites, you know what I'm saying? You know, there's like, there's a gap, there's a real gap. And the, the gap is education for a group of people who you're the first one in your family really trying to make it out here, right? And so we, we're kind of filling that gap. And so I'm glad to be here. Our second episode of the new year, 2024, in the building. We the best! No. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy to be here. All I could think about was I came from, from coming to America. I'm so happy to be here! <laughs> you see you from the, from the top of the apartment complex. <laughs> But absolutely, man, you said it, Festus, starting year three here. So awesome. So excited to get this going. Really trying to really trying to see how much we can squeeze, how much juice can we squeeze out of this lemon in 2024. So really excited to see what happens for us in this upcoming year. All right. So for today, we are talking about building positive relationships for guidance and support, right? So basically, we're talking about mentorship, everything that has to do with mentorship, right? So as we start, I want to go over some statistics about the power of mentorship, right? Let's start with academic success. A, 29, a 2019 study by Big Brothers, Big Sisters of America found that mentored students had a higher GPA and are 52% more likely to graduate from high school on time. Let's talk about college enrollment and completion. A 2015 study by the National Mentoring Network found that students who received mentoring were 70% more likely to enroll in college and 55% more likely to graduate. Let's talk about reduced risk factors. A 2017 study by the Mentoring National Mentoring Partnership found that mentoring can reduce the risk of negative behaviors like substance abuse, delinquency, and depression in vulnerable youth. And let's lastly talk about increased positive outcomes. A 2018 study by the Harvard Family Development Study found that students who had a mentor during adolescence were more likely to hold professional jobs, own their own homes, and have higher levels of educational attainment as adults, okay? So let's get into it. What exactly is mentoring, right? So as Fessis was talking earlier, uh, I was kind of thinking to myself, well, what is mentoring? And I thought about me when I was coming up. And the key word that came to my mind was guidance, right? Guidance encompasses so many things. Guidance encompasses teaching. Guidance en encompasses actually guiding. So showing the path on how to get from point A to point B. Gui uh, guidance is a uh, warning or advisement, right? You know, we always joke about, uh, Fessa told, uh, when we were talking the other day and um, basically about the person, you know, who, when you talk about doing this or doing that, he's like, don't do that. That's five to 10. You know what I'm saying? That's a mentor. That's guidance, right? That's someone who's showing you that path to go through. We're going to talk about the impactful people who mentored us in our lives. But Fessus, if you could, just a quick a quick de definition of mentorship in your mind, man. Man, this is a, this is a very powerful topic. And I'm, I'm so glad you're talking about it. And I, I definitely, definitely think we should talk about how we were mentored because I think there's a lot of, of people who misunderstand mentorship. You know, if you if you want to take it back, you take it back to, you know, to 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 ancient Greece, Rome, and the whole concept of a of a mentor or mentee 
was that you'd have a person, a privileged person, a person who had resources and access and a family would give their child to this individual to be taught, right? Now, it, it could go one of two ways. It could go that we're an affluent family and we hired this mentor, mentee to then basically tutor our child, right? These, all these words, if you go look, they're Greco, Greco-Roman words. And so basically this is where we get the word pupil from. One of the words we get the word pupil from, right? Is this concept of, of basically having somebody who's able to teach or train the child in a specific thing. So let's say you were a Roman or Greek senator or a politician. You would then take your child, give them this tutelage from this individual, and that would, person would then prepare them for the next level of that they're supposed to take up, which in the, in the uh, Greek society particularly, if you, it was viewed that only certain men can reach these certain levels of, of, of idealism, right? And these were basically Greek men. And so you needed to be mentored or taught. Now it goes into some really bad rabbit holes. You know, obviously we won't talk about them because they're a little X-rated and expletive. But then if you, if you fast forward throughout time and history, the, the basic concept and, and cultures and cultures, but the basic concept is to be shown a path or pathway by somebody who's kind of been there and succeeded before. So if you particularly uh, African-American or black backgrounds, these were called rites of passage, right? If you go to, again, Hispanic backgrounds, this is kind of where the quinceaneras and stuff come in, right? And those different types of things, because it's really this concept of there's a period of time in your life when you're being prepared for adulthood, right? and being able to take on the role as a man or woman in the community. And that's that's the concept. And, and that concept is really lost in America. Really right now, if you were to say in general, what is America's rite of passage, it would be high school graduation, right? So that would be like the big thing. Did you get your, did you get your high school uh, diploma or your GED? That would be kind of the, the general rites of passage. And, and it's not that we're against that, I think it's great, get that, get that high school diploma, get that GED, but there's so much to life beyond the classroom, right? And we want to see people succeed in life, but that's why we we're called laddering success. We want to see you take that step-by-step -step approach in order to see success in life and career beyond the classroom. So, so yeah, let's, let's, let's hop right into it. Oh, absolutely. So the way I want to break this down is, you know, you talked about that, like, you know, the history of mentors. I want to talk about the different types of mentors because people think, you know, when you think about a mentor, you probably think of like a someone who looks like a teacher, right? Male or female adult with some, you know, experience who kind of guides and helps, or it's probably someone closer to your age, a little bit older who kind of guides you. And so there's different types, right? You got like peer mentors. I think when we were growing up, you know, I, I, me personally, I, I could say people like, you know, Festus, your older brother. You know, that, that I consider that to be a, a peer mentor. Obviously, like I said, a little bit older, but just people, you know, folks that were a little bit older, you know, for me, it was like folks that were close to us that, you know, that we grew up with that were just a little bit older who had already graduated from high school. And so we kind of saw what they were doing. And, you know, I, I still remember when I was Wale, we were in, we were at the field house and, and I was, I was being kind of braggadocious because my dad was starting to teach me how to drive. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm out here swaying, you know what I'm saying? You got to, you know, if you move it down, you're going right. If you put it up, you're going left. And Wallace started laughing. He was like, no, bro, if you put it down, you turn it left. If you put it up, you turn it right. Because it's the and I was like, oh, yeah, 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 my bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'll still, I'll still be out here, you know what I'm saying? I, I get it. You know, but, you know, those are those pure, those pure mentor relationships that I think about. And then, of course, you have professional as you start to grow and you become an adult, you start to be in more professional standings and backgrounds and settings. You start to see those folks. And we, I don't know where either me and you were talking about this Festus, or we talked about this on, an, on another uh, episode of Edge of Steps where you meet these people and there are certain qualities that they have. You know, yeah. It was, it was in our, it was in the, the leadership meeting that we had for LYS where we talked, we were talking about the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And I believe we were going over the law of respect. Mm. And 
the consistency. You will start to see certain patterns in people and you'll say, I don't know what it is, but this person just has a certain error about them, a certain air of confidence, a certain air of, I think I said competence, of consistency that just breeds confidence. Yeah. And I just want to hang around it. I just want to be around it, right? Yeah. And so you slowly start to, you know, connect and do things for that person and learn from that person. That's, you know, those are those professional mentors and they can make a really great impact on you, especially if they have tried and true values. I'll put it to you that way. And when I say tried and true values, I mean those things that have been with us since the existence of man, right? Since the existence of time when we started to, you know, Bro, work I, within each other. Go ahead, go ahead. Fosse. No, man, I think you're bringing up such a huge point Right. Because there's so many people now, so many young people that for mentorship, quote unquote, mentorship, they're going online and they're just basically a, a pain to be in somebody's Slack or Discord or, you know, they're, and it's like, hey, this guy's mentoring me or this girl's mentoring me, whatever. And to me, I, I think it's so dangerous nowadays because, like you said, human beings have been around for a very, very, very long time. So there's this, there's a saying that there's nothing new under the sun, right? That actually comes from scripture, comes from Ecclesiastes. And the thing is, when people have been successful, a lot of times as a young person, you know, especially now you're watching social media and you're like, man, I feel like I'm, I'm, I suck at life. I'm not doing well at life, you know? And the reality is, is that these people online, these online gurus, some of them are not really successful. Genuinely speaking, some of them are not real good mentors and author authorities on anything because some of them are just regurgitating what they heard from somewhere else. And so literally they'll, they'll, they'll take a course or a package and then they'll, they'll turn around and sell it to you. Yo, $500, I'm your mentor. You know what I'm saying? And they really haven't accomplished anything in life. And the, and the other thing about that, that I think you're just, oh man, so passionate about this is that, I'm so passionate about this, but it's just, you know, I think you're bringing it up is that, you know, as a young person, you don't know what's tried and true and that's hard to see. You know what I mean? So it's so easy to see like, okay, that person has a nice car. That person looks like they're doing their thing online, but let me tell you some people, 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 they can rent cars. Some people don't even rent cars. Some people, unfortunately, they're, they're so shameful that they will just go into a hotel or into a party or something like that and lean on the car, take a couple pictures, and they just know how to do the Photoshop just right. That's it. Like, they really don't know anything else. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's literally, they just go to a nice restaurant and lean on the car in front of a nice restaurant, take the pictures, and then they want to charge you $500 for mentorship. Come on. Come on. Anyway, Ole, you know, you know I'm so boxing, man. I'm so passionate about this. You know. No, for sure. Hill, sure, what's man. up, man? Yes, oh, yes, yeah. yes. In the building, live and direct. For those of you who are listening, we are now being joined by the 2024 him B. 2024, that guy. He or, he's already won 2024. We're 14 days in. He's already won 2024. My good friend, Daniel Hill. How you doing? Good, good, good. And once again, you know what I'm saying? I'm just that guy. He's him. And also, I've won 2025 already. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I'm hey, ready to already claimed it. You know what I'm saying? That's, so, that's the always... attitude to have, man. That's the attitude hey, to have. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, man? I actually won 2024 and 2022. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, hey, man, I came on at the right time. Right yeah. when this was going in, man. <laughs> man, happy people know what they're talking about online. And even he said the written... Man, I think there's a place where you can stun about a being in a jet. You can actually stun. Like, it's not even a real jet. They can go in there and just take pictures inside the jet, bro. Oh, man, yeah, that yeah. is such a wonderful point. Man. I totally forgot about that. These people don't. And I be telling people, man, the only reason they rich is because y'all keep buying their stuff. That's 100%, what... <laughs> 100 bro. Talk about it. Talk I was about... like, I was like, bro, like, let's see. How I'm saying like, okay, there's people who not do things. Like, okay, I'll give you an example. I'm not going to use a company, but Fess know what I'm talking about. I'm going to use it. So when well, Fess was in one group, I a shrunk it does too. Those people in there don't know nothing, but can market something real good. <laughs> and they make all this money, don't know nothing about what they even teaching, bro. Now, the real people, quiet, making their thousands, $10,000 a month, they don't talk. 
They don't talk now. If you ask them, they'll give you the advice, but they don't be talking. But man, these it's so many people who just be like, because I'll be like, man, matter of fact, some some people even tell you they don't know. They will say that I actually didn't learn this. I learned this from no, this ain't my advice. I actually got it from here. But if you sign up through me, then I can show you how it all works. I thought like, he just told you who did it. So why y'all going through this person? <laughs> hundred percent hundred percent and see this is this this is stuff that again it, it gets on my nerves because like yeah. you said the the real people who are successful are are quiet and i think that's mm. something that's is is hard in this day and age because you know when you when you look at how you know etfs was a thing everybody was in the etf literally <laughs> you had people you had people, is it N NFTs? NFTs, not yeah, ETFs. Yeah. My, my bad. I'm getting my financial terms mixed up. <laughs> but anyway, you had people who were making millions in an hour, in a day, in 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 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Based off of this, think think about that. You know what I'm saying? And and again, in in this part of the statement, I'm not trying to lump this person in with everybody else because I do think this person generally does try to help people. But you had Gary Vanderchuk yeah. actually make, I think they said something like $95 million in like five days off of NFT. Because yeah. with his NFT, you're supposed to be able to get coaching from him from here uh -huh. on out or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now look at where NFTs are. And again, like I said, I'm not saying anything. I'm not throwing shade on Gary Vanderchuk because number one, I don't know him personally. Hey, LYS fam. It's Ole once again. You know, these days, many families are busy but want personalized attention. We at Laddering Your Success understand this dilemma and have created a unique approach to help guide you and your child with personal development tools to build a life of purpose. This intimate approach is helpful for those parents that feel the need to have a focused heart-to-heart -heart conversation deciding on the next steps after high school. We provide individual post-secondary planning, virtual customized college and career counseling, and scholarship guidance and planning. Our one-on-one -on -one sessions are tailored to each individual student to maximize their potential in the post-secondary realm. With our guidance, your child will be able to make their dreams a reality. Don't wait. Simply go to lys.com forward slash parents to get your copy today. Now let's get back to business on this podcast. Number two, I do think he genuinely, genuinely tries to help, help people in his own way, right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm just saying, Everybody who is pushing NFTs and pushing all of this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, mentor this, mentor that, mentor this. And then that stuff is up and gone, and they're gone with your money. Yeah. And this, this is one of the reasons why when you see people who are genuinely successful, they really don't want to push advice on people too hard. Because, number one, a lot of times it ends up backfiring on them. Mm, that's real. You know, oh, man, you, I, I, I was supposed to get, I was supposed to do, and I didn't get, I didn't do. And it's like, no, you're not taking responsibility. That and this point. is the thing is that in, in any relationship, in any relationship, any relationship, there's two key things in any relationship. Number one is responsibility. Number two is accountability. Mm. And so as we're talking about building positive and healthy relationships, getting coaching, getting, getting, you know, getting built up, there should be some degree of both of those in that relationship. If you can't come to them and, and say, hey, look, I got questions. Hey, look, and I'm not just talking about questions. I got questions about the relationship, how things are going. How can we make this better? If you can't, that's usually a red flag. That part. It's usually, it's usually a red flag. If you can't say, especially as a young person, hey, let me get my uncle involved. Let me get my aunt involved. Let me get my, let me get my big brother to come in and come into a meeting or something like that. If you can't do that and they say, no, 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 it's just between us, red flag. Yeah. Hey, hey! I remember That's... I went to a meeting, man. Since you said that, bro, I went to a meeting. And dude was like, he was like, "If you ain't ready to start right now, man, don't tell me." I was like, "That's a bit." Like, <laughs> like I ain't got to. Like, bro, you ain't even showed me nothing yet. Like, it's man. That's that's real, bro. bro. That's real. That's right real. time so... came at the right time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, thank you for that, man. We got professional. That's pro so we're talking about professional mentors, and then. Lastly, we have community mentors. So these are people that uh, you see, you could call these teachers if you're in a school, your school district, or and that's any type of school. 
and we're going to talk about that a little bit further later on, it could be, it, it doesn't even have to be a teacher that you necessarily have every day, right? Um, you know, I can tell you, I, I had mentors in, that, in, in my school who were mentors for classes I didn't even have, but because what they worked with was things that I was interested in, they therefore became a mentor, right? So mm -hmm. you've got mentors in that regard. You got mentors for those of you who are involved with the community in one way or the other, right? If you hear us talking on the on the podcast, you'll hear me say, hey, I'm always going to the community center to talk to the kids and do this and do that. That is a wonderful opportunity for you to meet new people, new mentors in your church, right? At your home, whenever you go out with your family and you, you know, meet people at different, you know, at different occasions and different events, you start to come across people who, who you connect with in a very deep way, right? Who you connect with. And it's, as I was going to say, it's easy to communicate. We'll talk about that, but but just people that you connect with and people that you can relate to really well and who can become those mentors and can, who can guide you, right? Mm -hmm. So those are the different types of mentors. What I want to get into now is I want to get into the needs of first-generation minority and non-traditional students when it comes to finding mentors, right? So when I think about first-generation students, I think about I think about me at the time. Festus, I think about Festus. It's something else isn't playing here, is it? Oh, you good? No. You good? Okay, I hit something on my headphone. Sorry, it's going off, but it's all good. Hey, LYS fam, it's Ole. Thanks so much for listening to LYS. I just wanted to take a quick moment to talk to the parents. That's right, mom and dad. Parents, prepare your child for their best educational fit after high school with our comprehensive LYS Parents Guidebook. Our helpful guide includes a range of activities designed to help you better understand your child's unique gifts and abilities. Additionally, we provide valuable insights into the student loan debt crisis and offer practical tips on how to avoid accumulating large amounts of debt. Our ebook also includes a wealth of information on scholarships, grants, and payment exemptions that can help guide your child towards a bright and successful future. With our expert guidance, you can rest assured that your child is well prepared to make informed decisions about their education and career path. Don't let your child's future be in jeopardy. Invest in their future today by downloading the LYS Parents Guidebook. Simply go to lys.com forward slash parents to get your copy today. Now let's get back to the show because you know it's some good topics. So for first generation students, some of the concerns or things I thought about were the lack of familiarity with college culture and navigation. A lot of kids may not know how to identify, approach or connect with potential mentors. There is a limited personal network. So many folks lack connections to professionals in their desired field or who share their background. On top of that, a lot of young people don't even know their desired field. So that whole section of folks that you could be connected with is kind of, is kind of pulled away. Financial constraints. Many struggle to afford mentor programs or, tr or travel for in-person meetings, but I guarantee you we're coming at the right time. We got some good stuff happening this year to where finances throw them out the window, right? If you're here looking for help, we got ways to come for you to come and get that help. And family expectations and responsibilities. This is a huge one, right? And we're going to talk about this a little bit more as well. Many may face cultural or familial pressure to prioritize family oblig obligations over educational pursuits. Mm. Some super, super fire uh, points and things that we're going to go over. Um, I'm going to leave this open for anyone right now to talk about it so I can. Hey, okay. yeah. I, oh, I, I, think that, I think that's a big one. Go ahead, Daniel. No, I was going to say that's key because I realize as a teacher, you know, sometimes, like you said, first generation, they might not see, I mean, they see education important, but if they got, if they got to work and somebody needs to watch the kid, that other child going to stay home and watch the kid. And we'd be like, Hey man, your child got to come to school fam, or that $500 ticket coming. Like you can't just admit, but see, they might, but I see how that's understanding, how I understand now, because they was raised, like somebody has to take care of the kid while I'm not there. So that right there is a, is a big uh, part. Yeah. And, and I just want to add on, you know, when you're faced with, and this is the hard part, 
And if you're a first generation student, really, really listen to me. I, and I, I totally get it when you're faced with, I don't have enough food today. I don't know where I'm going to eat today. It's really hard to pick up a book because you're like, what is this? How is this going to help me? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, this, this sometimes it just it, it it really hurts because it's like, you know, you got all these people trying to push education on you and talk about education, and it's like, okay, but you don't understand what I'm going through. I I literally don't have no food. I barely have clothes. I'm like 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 I got to get it today, and I really want to talk to you because you could get it today and kind of lose tomorrow. And that's the thing that I think is so, so hard because you got, you do face tough choices. I know. Cause I've been there. I've, 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 I've slept in abandoned apartments. I've slept on, on an air mattress. I didn't been there before. So I already know what it is. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you might be struggling and be like, okay, well that education thing isn't for me, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you college isn't for everybody. Education is. And so sometimes you really got to step back and look at things and say, okay, how can I get the most information, not to get me out of the situation, but to keep me out of the situation? And that's a, that's a difference. I don't want to just get out the situation. I want to stay out the situation. And so this is where education comes in, both formal and informal. So that was that. That's, that's somebody being able to spit game to you on the street, talk slick to you on the street, kind of give you game on how to move in the street. But then there's also on the corporate side, in the classroom side, how do you do things? How do you operate? And, and this is the thing. People can sit up here all day, talk about racism, code switching, all of those different types of things. I get it. Done been there, did that. But sometimes you got to you gotta go through what you got to go through to get where you're trying to go. You know what I'm saying? You know, I believe it was, a T, I'm, I'm, I'm co quoting T.I., but I don't think it was T.I.'s original phrase. You know, sometimes you, you got to do what you have to do in order to be able to do what you want to do, right? And so this is the thing. You can't just be focused on, the here and the now, as hard as that sounds, right? Go ahead and do what you have to do to get it right now, which generally means, this is what this generally means, okay? It means trading time or energy for money. That's really what it means in most cases. So if, you know, oh, I know this is, this is a trip, but I've been watching The Wire lately. I just, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> yeah, I've never watched The Wire before, before oh. and then, are you I stumbled. I, exactly, bro. I like, and so now I'm like, I'm like up on it. I'm like, oh man, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been binging, you know, a couple episodes here and there. You know, when I get a little free time, but it's really fascinating because all the different perspectives. But it really made me reflect on what we're going through in school. You know what I'm saying? Because like this is, I'm, I'm just put it out there. This is part of how I made it through high school. Is I was, I was a history buff. And so because I, I liked history, I would watch the history chat. And man, I can even go way, allegedly, let me say this. Allegedly, there was a cable box outside of our complex. And allegedly, if you just took the wires and plugged the wires in, you get cable in the house, allegedly, right? This is allegedly. And so the thing is, we allegedly, somebody would plug in everybody's cable in the building so they wouldn't know which place was getting the, was hooking the cable up? You know what I'm saying? Allegedly, this is allegedly from what you know what I'm saying because you know you allegedly there was a lock and you had to break the lock. You know what I'm saying? And allegedly, you know you didn't want just that one lead to your apartment cable in, so everybody got the free cable. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly, this is all allegedly. So long story short, watch watch the History Channel, National Geographic, man. And so it's like because somebody came and hooked it up back in the day. And so I used to just absorb all of that stuff. So by the time I hit high school, I really didn't have to study that much for history because I knew so much history from watching. I kind of have a photographic memory. So again, just being the, the type of person I am, I'm, I'm struggling financially. And so what I started doing was sell answers to the test. I would take my test. I would write down my answers. And then, you know, and then I would, I would just be like, yo, it's $5 a pop after the test. You know what I'm saying? So I might make $20 off of a test. You know what I'm saying? $30 off a test. Well, that that $20 for me would go all week. That's bus money. That's lunch money. You know what I'm saying? 
And so, you know, test would be Friday. It was sometimes it get me through the weekend. You know what I'm saying? So all that to say, like, you know, there's ways granted. Is that, the, is that the best thing to do? No. But if I sat down and, you know, I asked a kid sell drugs versus, you know, sell answers to the test, bro, sell answers to the test, but go find you something better to do. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know what I'm saying? Don't just stay right there. That's, that's a big part of our problem is that we think, oh man, we hit a lick and this is the way I'm going to make money and I'm going to keep making money. Nah. And if I really had my hustle mindset on, what I should have did was take the 20, go buy some candy, come back and flip the candy. But in high school, we wasn't really eating candy that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, selling candy like that. In middle school, maybe I did a little sales there. But anyway, go. I'm so boxing. But I'm just saying, y'all, sometimes you got to do what you got to do until you can do what you want to do. And ain't nobody knocking you for that, but don't keep doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Stay away from the cable boxes. You can't even do it now. We we, we deregulated now, man. Everything's, everything's, you know, online. Allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Stay Blurred vision. <laughs> Actually canceled my internet. After y'all got up, I was like, man, I'm about to cancel this $5 cable. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so... We talk about this, right, from a first-generation uh, standpoint, lack of familiarity with college culture and navigation. Um, so a lot of folks may not know how to identify, approach, or connect with potential mentors in these areas. Uh, limited personal network, many lack connections to professionals in their desired field or those who share their background. Um, I think about that a lot. You know, if you're a first-generation student, one of the things I've noticed you could be Mexican American, Chinese American, Indian American, Nigerian American, your uh, Irish American, Scottish American, whatever. Any first generation, the hallmark of that group is staying close to their culture for support. Right? Why? Well, that goes back kind of to the heart of LYS. We talk about LYS. It's in alphabetical order. It's the first one to see is culture. Right? Culture is the language the traditions, the beliefs, the food, all these different aspects of, of culture, that's usually where you stay with, right? So that's going to be one of the first places where you can find mentors. Now, because groups naturally get, or stick with their own, you may be missing out on some of those potential, some of those potential mentors outside of your, outside of your network. Or Talk, uh, talk. You may not e you may not even know about them, right? You know, and so that's one of those things that you have to look for. To thank God for a company, thank God for LYS to come out and get and, and put you in those places with those folks. The same thing with financial constraints. One of the things I see with a lot of parents is I think we do this. We we have this negative mindset to certain things, and so we will we will push things down and push things away before. We even give them a chance. Oh, they have this. They have this program to help with this and that. Oh, they're probably going to charge our arm and a leg. We do free mentoring every Sunday. Oh, they probably have. Oh, we have a scholarship guide. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to spend all this money just to for you to not get a scholarship. It's fifteen dollars. It shows you how to write a an essay, a scholarship essay. It shows you the difference. It shows you all those things, right? Hey, LIS fam. It's Ole. Just wanted to take a quick break to let you know that even though the cost of college can be daunting, the LYS Scholarship Guide eBook can assist you in realizing your dreams. You can identify and apply for scholarships using the information, advice, and resources in our comprehensive guide. Also, we've provided a template for a successful scholarship essay to help you stand out from the crowd. Don't allow student loan debt to control you. Get your copy of the LYS Scholarship Guide eBook right away to take charge of your destiny. Simply go to lys.com forward slash parents to get your copy today. Now let's get back to that fire conversation. So, and those things come with culture. How do we know? My parents said the exact same things. <laughs> so I guarantee you, a lot of cultures are going to have the same, same things. And I have to give my parents credit. They went to a lot of those, you know, when we were in high school, like 2004, we graduated, they were doing those, they would meet up at hotels. And they would have these guys come, these gurus, and tell them about all these things they, they can do for the students to get them into college. But the program was like $3,000. And my parents were like, 
I'm here because I don't have the money. Now I got to pay all this money for this idiot who who doesn't even make the grades. I mean, they didn't know at the time. I was not making the grades. Oh, but you know, thank, thank God they didn't do it. You know what I mean? So, you know, it just goes to think about it. Um, Bro, I'm glad you spoke yeah. on that, man. Mm -hmm. That's one of the main things. People complain about paying for getting help, but they won't complain about paying for something that is worthless. Yeah. And, and and this is where I think the key comes in is is being able to see true value. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I think that's one of the big things that I've learned most recently and that I think sometimes our parents might have missed on or even us as young people might be missing is like, what is true value, right? So there's, a, there's an old saying, everything that glitters is not gold or everything that shines is not gold. And what, what that saying is, is, is I, I think it comes from, you know, when, when people look in the water and they're trying to dig for gold in the water and they see that little shiny thing and they think, oh man, I'm gonna put all this effort behind getting that thing out. And then that thing is, is worthless, right? And so the thing is, I think we have to be able to assess what is real value first and foremost. Now, the easiest way of doing this is looking back on your past history. As a first-generation minority student, that might not be the best thing. Why? Because you have a lot of bad experiences, to be honest. Just be, you know, I'm being honest. If, if I judged what I was learning in life based off of what I had learned, you know, when I was 13, 14, 15, even 17 and 18, if I judged the things going forward based off of those things I learned in the past, it was full of bad experiences because I grew up in not good neighborhoods, grew up, you know, in environments where people did not treat, treat me well, treat me fairly, those different types of things. And so, so a lot of times that could shade your judgment. You see what I'm saying? And so again, when you're talking about, you know, digging in to try to find out, you know, kind of, is it, is it gold or not? I think we have to really step back and look at what are the characteristics of something that's gold, of something that's truly valuable. And I think Olay said it really, really profoundly earlier about something that's time tested and true. This is why antiques hold their value and actually grow in value versus things that are new, right? If you, if you go to Ikea, you could get a brand new piece of furniture and that brand new piece of furniture is great. Try to sell it in two years, three years. Now, if you go to Tiffany and Company, right, and you find one chair on Tiffany and Company that's 30 times the cost of, or any, any other auction house, you know, you find a chair that is 30 times the cost and you say, why? Why is this chair 30 times the cost? Well, it's lasted for 100 years. It's lasted for 50 years. It's lasted for 200 years. It's the craftsmanship that went into that thing, Right. And so that's something you have to train yourself to be able to see. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's continue. So we talked about first generation, and now I want to talk about some of the things that minority students may deal with, right? So we're talking about minority students that may deal with underrepresentation in professional roles. So as they're looking for potential mentors, Sometimes they may struggle to find mentors who share their racial or ethnic or ethnic identity or understand their cultural experiences. But they may they may deal with microaggressions and bias. They may they may experience discrimination or unconscious bias from potential mentors. And they may have to navigate stereotypes and assumptions. They may need mentors who can advocate advocate for their abilities and challenge limiting perceptions. So when I, when I thought about this, this is one of those things that I was like, man, this is, this is, this is really, really, it's a really, really big. And one of those things we kind of don't talk about. I think we all do it, whether we know it or we don't know it. But I think at some point we, we kind of do have some bias or some, uh, I won't call it a microaggression, but we, we may have some inkling of something in our minds. Uh, and it's, and it, sometimes it can be based off of a, a racial or ethnic feeling or, or association. 
And I think it's one of those things we definitely have to talk about. One of the things I think about is the medical profession and how in the medical profession, a lot of doctors deal with pain for different folks of racial backgrounds differently, right? What am I talking about? It's they, they used to show this stat that talked about how doctors were less likely to provide pain medication for black patients because they, they deem as if they could take certain levels of pain more. They had a higher tolerance of pain as opposed to other racial ethnic groups. But because of historical things that have happened, there are reasons why, you know, black folks just aren't used to showing a certain amount of pain when they're going through certain things. Right. And so when you're a doctor, if you're the only doctor who's working in a, if you're the only black doctor who's working in the field, you're, it's almost like you're on double duty, right? You're not only a doctor, you are an advisor, right? For all of these certain things. And you have to kind of like relate that to those who work in your field. And I think that's the importance of, of having, of sometimes having a mentor who does look like you. I, I, I thought about that because the last couple of years I taught, I thought, I taught, uh, I taught bilingual students. So I taught bilingual students to, you know, the, the, all of my students were Hispanic. So for me, I thought of it as a challenge because I, I did not know a lot of Spanish and there was some sort of a language barrier, right? But at the same time, I also had to think about it from a perspective of they don't see a lot of teachers. I think usually in bilingual classrooms, the teachers are probably going to be Hispanic. So I was probably, for a lot of those kids, the first Black bilingual teacher that they had. Probably. I probably was. So it was it was definitely kind of different. It was like, all right, you're used to having probably a Hispanic female as a teacher. Now you have a Black male as a teacher. Good luck. You know what I mean? You just, you just kind of got to go and you just kind of got, got to go and run with it. But well, fortunately, I, I was working in my purpose. I was working in my passion. So we loved each other all the same. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, it just, it just rolled. It just rolled like, you know, like any other class that I would have. But I think those are one of those things that are like really, really uh, important that happen. And when it comes to mentoring is having someone who you can relate to. And sometimes when you have a kid who's gone through a lot, they need someone when they look up who, who does look like them who can say I was exactly in the same position you were or something similar like, like this or like that happened to me. Not to say it won't happen all the time, right? That you won't need someone who, who always looks like you. But for a, for a lot of folks, they do need that relation, right? Bro, bro, and I think that's so powerful in this day and age that you're bringing that up and mentioning that. Because, you know, as you were talking about us sharing our, you know, kind of talking about our mentorship, one of my first mentors was a Vietnamese guy named Kong, okay? And maybe maybe I should have, let me use his name or not use his name. I don't know. Let's yeah, see yeah, how yeah, deep yeah, this yeah, goes, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, <laughs> so you know, I, again, like I said, I was out here trying to get it. And so one of my first jobs, I worked at a mom and pop pizza place. Basically, I just walked down to the pizza place. Uh, we used to get pizza rolls. That's where the pizza roll came from, from this little pizza place. And so there was a guy who used to cut grass and this guy, we used to cut, help go around, help him cut grass, but he wouldn't really pay us well or pay us that much. I, you know, that's a whole nother thing. Long story short, walked down in small and pop pizza place. And I was like, y'all hiring? He was like, okay, we need to cook. And, and so I met one of the drivers there named Kong. So Kong ended up being my first mentor, which again, you would think a, I think he was probably 30 something year old Vietnamese guy or late twenties and a, and a 18 year, 17 year old black kid would have anything in common. Right. But I think this is where we have to kind of talk about like common experiences. You know what I mean? There's some people who just because they might not look like you doesn't mean they haven't been through that thing. And that's why I said, it's key what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Because we're talking about judging by more than outside appearance. And, you know, with a lot of the conversations having happening now, the, all of this other stuff, sometimes it leads us to just try to judge by outside appearances instead of what a person has actually been through, right? Absolutely. Still, yeah. as a young person, be careful because you don't want to be taken advantage of, right? And so what does that mean? You know, hey, talk to, like, in, in, at, at that, in that season in my life, I really didn't have anybody to talk to. 
And so he, we would go out and go to taquerias. Bro, this was the first time I really experienced the taquerias. You know, you get, hit the taqueria, you get some tacos, uh, you get, uh, you know, taco $5. And, uh, you know, he would just be like, yo, come, let's get something to eat. Let's talk about life. You know, and it, it wasn't even so much that he just wanted to talk about life. I think he just wanted someone to go get tacos with. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like to be yeah. uh, to be 100% honest. Well, that relationship ended up, I think, being a, both a blessing and a curse to many other relationships in my life. But Ole met him and Ole knows that that got us in trouble. <laughs> you remember know that time Mente tried to fight Kong? Or you Were you there? Yes, yes, I yeah, was yeah, yeah, and then and then and then meant they pushed me on the soap. <laughs> I almost broke my back. <laughs> anyway, oh man, this is inside, inside, inside joke, guys. Inside joke, guys. But anyway, yeah, man, life be life in. So absolutely, man, life be life in. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Life be life in, man. But we learn, we learn, man. So lastly, I think this may be the last thing we go to before we, before we close, we're going to continue talking on this next week. Let's talk about non-traditional students. So non-traditional students, kind of like first-gen students, they may be balancing multiple responsibilities. So they may be juggling work, family, and other commitments alongside their studies, making it harder to dedicate time to mentorship, or even, I, I guess I can, I won't say more importantly, but not it making it harder to prioritize things like mentorship. There may be different learning styles and needs, right? Some students may require a more flexible or adaptable approach to mentorship than traditional students. Feeling out of place, this is my favorite one personally. Some students may feel isolated or disconnected from younger students or traditional college life, making it challenging to find suitable mentors. So, um, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Manny Gonzalez and Joe Young. Those are my band directors at Elsick High School. Super, super awesome men. I actually ran into uh, Mr. G not too long ago. And they, you know, when you're getting mentored, you don't realize you're getting mentored because you're literally just going through life, right? It's not like someone comes to you, hello. And they come up and they have a document and they're like, yes, I've been noticing you. And I think that we would, you would benefit from a mentor mentee relationship. Please sign here. Please read over this document, send it home to your parents. No, no one <laughs> nobody does that. It's just like, you know, you just live through life and things start to intertwine and they start to happen. And, 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 and before you know it, you know, you're learning valuable lessons for the rest of your life. And I think about me, my freshman year of, of high school. Man, I could not make, I could not make friends. I, I don't want to say, I don't know if I, if it, I, I chose not to make friends. I, I, I think I'm going to say I chose not to make friends. I think knowing what I know now, I could very easily have made friends. I say the opposite. <laughs> and remove. No, no, but I remember every day I'd get off the bus. And if I, if I didn't see any of my friends in the cafeteria for the first couple of weeks, I kind of uh, sat by the principal's office, I just sat down and I, I just, I, I just isolated. I just, you know, I just didn't, I was just very isolated. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where the, I didn't know where the kids were. I didn't, you know, even though it's a, bro, I, did, I did not know this about you at all, bro. I used to, I used to, used to go and sit and I, I didn't know, you know, very, very isolated, right? Very isolated. And it wasn't until I think I had seen Two people. I saw Aaron Thomas and Daniel Olu. And Daniel Olu, the reason I remember him is he always used to have a bag of Pepperidge Farm cinnamon raisin bread. I don't know why, but he just always used to have a bag of Pepperidge Farm cinnamon raisin bread. And they'd be like, you know, I said, well, we like, we would play football together. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I'm sitting here. And they're like, let's go to the field house. And I'd be like, okay. So, you know, I just got with them and started walking to the field house and as we would walk to the field house, I'd be like, oh, that's where this person is. And that's where this person is. Oh, that's where this person, that's where this person is. And so, you know, then, you know, I think the morning, the morning time would become my, the place to go. That's where I would see Festus in the morning in the night grade center, you know, so we, we have breakfast there. Shout out to free breakfast and free lunch, man. They came in clutch for your boy. But, uh, but you know, it's, I, I, I think about that because. People always talk about that one weird kid or weird girl or whatever. 
I don't know why, but I'm always drawn to that particular student. You know, I always want to go and just talk to them because a lot of times you'd be very surprised at the way they observe the world. You'd be very surprised at the at the way they perceive things. And we are all used to thinking like this, but you have that one person who thinks a little bit that way. And, and when you're young, it, it's definitely a turnoff, right? Because especially if you look at kids these days, they're more likely to all follow the same person, right? So if you go look, I don't even know if this is true or not, but you know, you go look at one random, you know, one girl in the school and she got the Stanley Cup with the pink sparkler, the, the you know, the pink sparkler design, you know, all the other girls get, may go out and get, you know, their own version of that. And so you have another kid who's like, you know, brings a plastic bottle and they're like, and the, the, these high school kids are different now. They'll say things like, you know, there's actually a higher concentration of microplastics inside your plastic bottle, right? <laughs> it's like, bro, like my mom ain't got $80 to go over by no Stanley Cup. I'm Why do you stuff. even know that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I just always loved hanging on to the kid who thinks, who, who as they say, is a little off. You know, because you'd be surprised at, um, at, at what that kid has to say. And, and, you know, usually as a teacher, I've experienced this. When that kid shows themselves, oh, it trips the whole class out. It trips the whole class. I remember we, we real quick, and I'll tell the story so I can let you guys go. We had a student. I'll never forget him. He used to sing this Tiny Tim song that no one knew about called Tiptoe Through the Tulips. And if you go on YouTube right now and you Tip type in. Toe through the tulips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so I used to, anytime, because he would come in class and he would just, the first day of school, he had like a hoodie over his head and he would just kept turning like this. And so my partner teacher was like, no, no. And I'm like, what? Let him, he's doing his thing. I was very, I was very like, let the kid do it, whatever they do. Just let them get comfortable and then we will deal with the problem throughout the year. We have a year to deal with this, so... You know, she was like, nope, and I'm like, relax, it'll be all right. And so as he got to open up a little bit, I saw his middle name was Cameron. It was really Cameron, but it was spelled like Cameron. So for me, Cameron was one of my favorite rappers. So I'm like, did he bop that back? Like, yeah. Boy, you know I mean? oh boy, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. like already like you're my guy because your middle name's Cameron. So slowly he starts to come out of his show, come out of his show. And then I found out he liked Tiptoe to the Tulips. And so sometimes he'd be, you know, he'd be having a lull day and I'd be like, I'd be like, homeboy, I'd be like, and he'd be like, I'd be like, ah, let's go, let's go, let's go. And so one day, one of the girls was causing trouble in the class. That boy turned around, stood up. He said, don't nobody want you with your dusty self. Go sit down. Whole class just exploded, exploded. And so that's how you slowly start to build those relationships with those kids who, as they say, may be a little off. So I, I think even for mentors, there's someone for everyone, right? There's someone for everyone. Everyone has that particular story background. You said it, Festus. Um, uh, how did you say it? You said for every, for every experience, it, it doesn't have to necessarily be, they don't necessarily have to look like you. It could be a matched experience or set of experiences that helps you relate with that other person, right? 100% man and I think that's the big thing is you know we you know and and I think Dr. King said it best is that you know especially since this is coming up on MLK day you know he said in his I have a dream speech that one day my children will not be judged by the color of their skin but the content of their character and I think that's such a powerful statement because in that statement he's saying look deeper than the skin than the clothing that that a person has on right and and then make good judgments and i think right now we're we're in a time we're in a space where we're kind of going backwards to a certain degree you know and i've you know i've you know people i work with older people i've heard them make those statements like man it feels like we're going backwards now you have to think about it that at at a time when when certain people had full advantage over others, some people are happy about where we are now, where 
you know, you could get a, you know, at, at there was a certain time in our country's history and it wasn't forever ago where you couldn't even work with somebody of the opposite skin color. Literally, you can't get a job here because of your skin color. And so now opportunities are much more open. And don't get me wrong because, you know, I, I understand, you know, mass incar incarceration. I understand. I understand those things. I've been pulled over because of my skin color, because I had the wrong car in the wrong neighborhood or in the, in the right neighborhood, basically. You know, my, my hoopty in a decent neighborhood. And there are certain neighborhoods that the police are not patrolling for safety. They're patrolling just to give tickets. It's just the reality. And they're giving them to poor people who really can't afford them. And so just to satisfy the city's need for funding. Let's be honest about all of these things. You know what I'm saying? And so as we're being honest about these things, we should also be honest that there has been progress made, right? And so don't, as a young person, you're looking for mentorship, you're looking to build positive relationships, don't get caught up in the fact of only skin color. And it's, it's hard to not do that. It's hard to not do that because that requires more of us. And that's what we talked about earlier, being accountable and being responsible and being open. Right, because oftentimes when we come from these environments, we've been hurt so much that we don't want to get hurt again. And so, because we don't want to get hurt again, we're like, "Oh man, I, I would just much rather, you know, not be friendly." You know, that's what we called it growing up. You're too friendly. Uh, and man, I was watching an episode of The Wire. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a dude. The dude's like, they just too friendly. The people who's trying to help them out is like, they're just too friendly. And it's like, well, maybe they've had those similar experiences that you've had. And they've overcome them. And, and granted, you got to be able to talk to people. But anyway, listen, as we like to say here on LYS, edu steps, there are legitimate reasons for not going to college. There's no legitimate reason for not getting an education. I am Festa Samoye. He is Mr. Olainka Shironke Ole. We were not going to throw it out there, the, the whole Nigerian. Ole, yeah. No, but anyway, no. And then I, I'm triggered. I'm triggered. I mean, no. I mean, no. We got Mr. D. Hill in the background. Thank you all so much for your time. Listen, we need your help. Hit that share button with somebody who needs to hear this. And definitely hit that follow button for, for more from us. So we'll see you on the next episode. Y'all be blessed. Oh, you're still there? Well, thank you so much for listening to the LYS podcast. 